Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 9 and today we're going to look at the difference between climb and conventional milling. Now if you're a total beginner to machining that won't mean a lot to you so hopefully in this video we'll discuss the difference. Now it's not the first video on this topic on YouTube, there's plenty of them. I'm going to try and do things a little bit differently. I've got the iPhone set up there to take some slow motion footage of the two processes and for the more advanced machinists we're going to look at times when you would want to conventionally mill on a CNC machine. Uh, to the total beginner, basically Climb mill on a CNC, conventionally mill on a manual machine. It is a little bit more complicated that, and there's times when you need to use one or the other in different circumstances. Um, but before we get into discussing the ins and outs of each process, let's watch them in slow motion and see what we think. This first bit of footage is the climb milling operation, and just look out for the fact that the chips have been evacuated out of the back of the cutter. Now generally climb milling is only suitable for CNC as CNCs use ball screws so they don't have the same backlash that a manual machine does. With a manual machine the backlash means that it can self feed and a climb milling operation can drag it up and over the, um, the workpiece which can almost feel a bit out of control. This second bit of footage is the conventional milling operation. Um, virtually always used on a manual mill but sometimes used on a CNC either for surface finish reasons or more typically because you're machining uh, a material with a um, sort of a hardened scale finish something that's been cast perhaps where a climb milling operation would be just too harsh on the cutting tool and would cause the cutting tool to chip. So now that we've seen both processes, it's important to be able to identify which is which. And the easiest way, certainly for the beginner, is to visualise it in terms of cutter direction relative to the workpiece. So if the cutter is going in a clockwise manner around the outside of the workpiece, it's climb milling, anti-clockwise around the outside, and it's conventional. The opposite is true on the inside of a pocket. So if it's going in a clockwise manner inside a pocket, that's conventional milling, anti-clockwise, and that's climb milling. Now we're gonna to have to have a look at a close up to find out exactly what the difference is in terms of chip formation. So let's do that now. So on each of these flutes, we've got a thin end and a thick end. And that's effectively like a small knife that's gonna slice into the stock. So if we're climb milling, what's happening is it's making really quite a harsh contact, bang, into the material there. And it's pulling out a big chip that gets thinner as it comes out. So if we're to sketch that, the chip is going to be formed thick and it will go to thin and that's formed like that. That chip is going to be fed out of the back of the cutter and you can see that in the slow motion. Now the opposite is true when we cut conventionally. What's happening is the cutter is still rotating in a clockwise direction but instead it's now feeding anti-clockwise and what's happening is the thin part of the flute is being dragged along the surface and it's cutting a small chip so it goes from thin to thick as it moves along. So instead we have a chip that looks like that. Now we're going to have a look at the two surface finishes on the original part just now but something to bear in mind is when we have a th chip that's thick to thin then a lot of the heat gets transferred into the chip rather than the workpiece which is a good thing. This is the conventionally milled side and the first thing you notice is that there's a burr and that's entirely consistent with um, the findings that you'll get with conventionally milled parts. As the cutter rotates it's taking the chip from thin to thick as it moves across and as it gets to the end that thin to thick is dragged across the surface. The next thing we'll notice about a conventionally milled part is that the scuff marks, you can see them here across the surface and that's because the chips are evacuated from the front of the cutting tool and as they are, some of them will fall in front of the tool and are dragged again and are recut across the, the surface and that's going to give these scuff marks. So let's compare that to the, um, the climb mill side. So first thing we notice is that there is no uh, burr. So that's a time-saving effect of uh, climb milling. Um, however, there's some very subtle differences in surface finish. So let's bear in mind the conventionally milled side first. Um, we can see the scuff marks are in line with the edge. The climb mill uh, surface finish is, is better, it feels smoother, it will have a higher surface quality, but we can see some machining mar marks that are parallel to the edge. And that's caused by the tool vibrating 
um, in this direction. And that is caused um, by a quite a subtle effect, which we're going to have to uh, resort to looking at a diagram to explain. So let's do that now. So we're going to reference an article from cnccookbook.com. Now, if you're not familiar with this website, it is a fantastic resource, and I'll put a link to this particular article in the description. They also make a piece of software called GWizard, which advises on speeds and feeds. So that's another excellent resource, and it's something I'll be doing a video on in future. Now, if we scroll down, we look at um, a section of the article entitled Tool Deflection and Cut Accuracy in Climb versus Conventional. And we're going to have a look at this diagram to explain some of these um, these machining marks in climb milling. So in climb milling, the, we've said that the cutter impacts the work quite heavily. So every force has an equal and opposite reaction. So if the cutter hits the work heavily, the work pushes back uh, against the cutter. And the result is that the cutter can oscillate slightly. If we look at the force vectors on each, uh, each of the, the climb cuts shown on the bottom here, it's pointing out directly away from the work surface and approaching a 90 degree angle. Now on the conventional cut, we're making a chip that goes from thin to thick, so the work piece is pushing back on the cutter in the line that follows the work piece edge. As a result, the force vector um, is roughly parallel to the work edge, which again is going to be contributing to that sort of smeared surface finish, um, but it, in theory at least, stops um, quite as much cutter vibration and that can be evidenced in the slow motion video and you will actually see quite a bit more vibration uh, from the slow motion camera. So this article and so the for some of the forums on Practical Machinist um, make a suggestion that roughing with climb and taking a small conventional pass can actually help eliminate this and lead to a better surface finish. So we're going to give that a try uh, perhaps not optimum conditions because we're not going to be running coolant. Uh, we're not using coated tools either, it's just a plain high speed steel. But it will be interesting to see if it makes an appreciable difference um, between our two existing processes. There's chips evacuating out the back. Going to move across one millimetre and then come back. So whilst we watch the slow motion, just a bit of a note about speeds and feet. Um, I haven't been particularly happy with any of the surface finish in this video, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, definitely a symptom of using an old um, high-speed steel cutter that's uh, somewhat blunt. We should definitely have been running coolant as well. Um, also, we're running four flutes rather than two flutes. There we can see some chatter marks. Um, we ran 2,200 RPM, 900 millimetres per minute in the feed. Um, the two flute will give a much better finish, especially if we slow down the feed rate. And working in carbide is going to give further improvements. Um, there's lots of room for improvement, but hopefully the video shows the main differences between climb and conventional anyway. Now, to my mind, that isn't really a huge amount better than just plain old climb milling, but then I wasn't using coolant. It looks to me and feels to me Pretty much like a halfway house between the two techniques. Um, there's people who swear by this method. I'm not overly convinced what I'm seeing, but then the setup isn't 100% ideal. Um, we should definitely have been using um, some coolant, and perhaps slowing the feed down a little bit would have would have helped. But um, the point stands that you still get a better finish from climb milling uh, than conventional milling on the whole. But there is perhaps an argument for using conventional milling for a, for a small finishing pass in some situations. So if you have experience with this, do let us know in the comments um, exactly what you use. So hopefully that was an interesting look into exactly what the difference between climb and conventional are, and it'll help someone out. I know that this video will certainly be of use to some of our students studying uh, climb and conventional for the first time. So there's plenty more videos in the pipeline. Uh, we're up to video number nine now, 10 next week, which is pretty amazing. We're getting on for 100 subscribers. So if you like these videos and you want to see more, like, subscribe and comment. Thank you. See you next week.